In 2008, I began a series of conversations through Facebook with a woman I had grown up with. We grew up at Jesus People USA Evangelical Covenant Church, an intentional religious commune on Chicago's north side. She began to share her stories, which included others I had grown up with. Immediately, I realized I had to document these stories on camera. In 2009, I moved back to Chicago and began a series of interviews for a film that would essentially be a kiss back to our past, acknowledging the pain, but rejoicing in the memories that seemed to bond us together closer than any blood could. My very first memory is, it was like five o'clock in the morning, and I'm looking through the window, my face is, you know, against the, the glass, and I see this uh, hole in the wall and it's, it's going into the stairwell. And I remember through the years of living there, that hole seemed to get bigger and bigger. I mean, it took them a long time to ever, uh, you know, patch things up. But when I look back now, it's like that hole represents kind of like our lives in the community. And, and that hole, that black hole is always kind of stuck with me. And I think it's like, the longer you live there, the more your life gets swallowed up. And I'm not saying everything's black and dark and depressing in this hall, but it's just like your whole life gets swallowed up in this place. I did not realize what would be unearthed in the process. I remember when I went up there once, um, his children were not home and nobody was home but the man. And he, you know, said, sure, you can still play in here. You know, and um, I think he was reading me stories or something like that. And, you know, here comes sit on my lap. And um, I remember him saying, you know, I w something about, you know, do you have a good feeling or I want to give you a good feeling. What was I? Again, I would say 14. I was down on the farm for a summer uh, with Star and Paul Colasar again. And I was with them a lot <laughs> during the summers because they managed the farm and I'd go down there. Um, and there were always single brothers down on the farm. And the thing about the farm is it's, uh, what, 1,500 acres out in the deep woods. It's very secluded, very easy to corner a child, very easy to, uh, have something go on and not be noticed. Um, so I'm down here and up until this point, I had never been molested there. I'd been physically abused heavily, but never sexually abused. Um, and then I'm on the farm and I'm 14. So I was a little bit older, obviously, than a lot of the kids that have stories to tell now. Um, but I'm spending the summer down there and there was a, a man down there that I would say he was at least 30 or 40 years old. I mean, he was quite a bit older. Um, and um, every time I was on my own, he was there. And I was like, what, what do you mean they're letting him go? I, I just went down to the police and told him what happened. The dude's gonna come after me. And he's like, I'm sorry, they're, they're letting him go. I don't know what happened, but they're letting him go. Mm. And then, um, I was in the lobby when he came in with Bob, his family head, and Bob was one of the guys I rode mountain bikes with. And I remember Bob yelling at me in front of, there was probably 10 or 15 people in the lobby. And how dare you, how dare you lie about this man? How dare you try to ruin his life? How dare you, you're, you're a liar. And I, I was crushed because, you know, this guy, I, I looked up to him. I, I rode bikes with him every day. He's one of my adult friends, mm -hmm. you know. Um, always good to me, you know. There's somebody that I looked up to and he's calling me a liar. And I know in my mind it happened. I mean, I was there. And come to find out, this guy is a registered sex offender and a child predator. And somebody told the police that I was a pathological liar and they let him go. 
and he walked right back into the into the doors of Jesus People USA. Because of the way Jesus People was set up by the founders, um, and then subsequently their children and a couple of other the pastors, it was engineered in a way that anybody and everybody could come into the commune, and it became a breeding ground for fucking with children. Um, and nobody was doing anything about it. If, any, if anything that was done about it, it was, oh, this kid's acting weird, let's get him out of here. Um, that's what, the only thing that was being done. Um, if anything, they were, they were defending the people who were being accused of this thing. And they were ch treating the child as if they were guilty of it. Alarms have been sounded many times over Jesus people's 40 year history. Whether it's been members voicing their concerns to the Jesus People leadership, larger secular news outlets, authors, or former members reaching out to the Evangelical Covenant Church, Jesus People's denomination. No one did anything. 